Welcome to the Intuitive Rising Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Brooks. This is a podcast that invites you to remember who you are, return to yourself, and rise into your highest and best soul self. Every week, I will be sharing inspiring conversations about topics that hold keys to your awakening. My mission as an international evidential psychic medium, Reiki practitioner, and intuitive mentor is to help you rise into who you were born to be. Enjoy the show. Hello, welcome back to another episode. I'm on a roll today. This is episode number two that I'm recording for you. Um, I'm here to talk about, <laughs> to share some things that have been coming up in readings lately. And yesterday in particular, I did three client sessions. It was a busy day and they all, they weren't like identical, obviously. I, there was, um, two intuitive guidance sessions and one was intuitive guidance and mediumship. However, I will say there was a definite theme that came through with all three of these people in their readings. And I personally really, really resonated with this theme. And I have a good feeling that you will too, or most of you will resonate with this as well. So um, this, the, the theme is number one, being an empath, right? And a highly sensitive person having like a very high level of sensitivity, um, compassion, all of that. There's lots of like heart chakra messages. Interestingly enough, I feel like for one person in particular, uh, two of these three people, I was, uh, as soon as I connected to their energy, I could see their aura. Um, and, uh, one person had this beautiful bluey, like a really nice, almost like my nails, really, really nice blue color with a little bit of purple kind of tinged, uh, at the edges, which is a little bit similar to mine from what I can see in my own aura, but also what other people have told me my aura looks like the blue and purple club. Raise your hand if you're in the blue and purple club. Uh, and so blue, you know, being connected to the throat chakra, communication, all that kind of stuff. I've also recognized it when I see somebody's aura has a lot of blue in it. For me, it tells me that expression freedom actually like freedom of expression communication whether that be through spoken word or written word is very very important to that soul's life um to their evolution in this our in incarnation and so that's like a tip that i always i am always given as soon as i see a lot of blue uh the other person's aura that i picked up on was very very green uh, and, uh, I, I told her a bit about the heart chakra and how that's connected to, uh, th kind of like the phase that she's in in life right now, but also gen genuine, generally <laughs> throughout her whole life, very heart chakra based, which if you were a bonus podcast episode subscriber, you will know that in the last bonus, I talked about the heart chakra. I opened myself up in that episode. If you're not, if you didn't listen or you're not a subscriber, what, what's stopping you? Get to it. But um, yeah, just to kind of briefly share with you, I opened myself up to spirit during that podcast episode and basically just said, what do the listeners need to know right now um, for their highest and best good? And what came through was a lot of heart chakra type messages and how that in particular is connected to uh, the ascension and evolution that is happening at a very rapid rate here uh, on the earth plane and why we are so sensitive and highly sensitive and empathetic and why that's a good thing even if we feel like the world doesn't always support it or encourage it and why that's such an important and pivotal uh, part of our uh, ascension as humans and so yeah there's that and so that's part of this message too about being so highly sensitive, feeling it all, being an empath, you know, raise your hand if you can relate to that. I certainly can. 
I used to think of it as a, as a weakness, right? Like I'd get embarrassed because I would get hurt easily or I'd cry when I'm mad and, you know, and, or I'd, I'd cry when I'm happy. How I cry when the national anthem plays, or if I'm watching a ball game and somebody gets a home run, like my instinct is to cry. You know, it, it just, even if they're not getting a home run, when they're at bat, when the little, little leaguers at bat and it's like holding, he, he or she is holding their, their bat. It's like, I'll cry about that. I don't know why I cry about everything all the time, but I've also learned that that's what makes me, me. And I'm a radio. Now I like to liken myself to a radio as a medium, because I think it's a really good analogy for mediumship. However, for you little light workers, risers out there, I want you to visualize yourself as a radio. Okay. And something that we're being called to learn right now is that, yes, we feel everything. We feel the gamut of emotions. Every emotion that's available to humanity, we feel it. Sadness, rage, grief, anger, you know, envy, joy, euphoria, whatever, all of it. <laughs> and sometimes all in one day, <laughs> right? So... You know, that's a lot, especially when you don't understand it or when you're internalizing, like, is there something wrong with me? Do I have multiple personalities? Like, why do I get upset about everything? Why am I so passionate about everything? Why is it that if I'm around, you know, a lot of people that I come home and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm drained AF? Why are other people, why do I attach to other people's energy so easily and, why is it so hard to detach, right? If you think of yourself as a radio, what does a radio do, right? It like basically transmutes radio frequencies and plays. You turn on the radio, right? There's invisible frequencies that go into the radio. This is a very non-scientific description and analogy in case you haven't noticed already and the song plays right and you can turn the dial and you can change what kind of song it is but ultimately the radio just plays right the, the radio doesn't even get a say in what channel it's on it's just the container for the frequencies and it transmutes and then the person that's turning the dial is in charge of what plays, right? And when. So let's think of ourselves like a radio and all of the energy from other people, all of the emotions, the collective emotions. Right now we're in a period of like rapid collective accelerated uh, ascension, right? Knowledge, wisdom, people are waking up left, right, right, and center. There's also a lot of collective grief and trauma over just the state of the world, uh, all the injustices, the wars, all the trauma, all the pain that's being inflicted, all, all the, the crap, right? And so we're feeling all of that all the time. So with the ascension comes more joy, right? More presence, more understanding. Okay. This is why I'm going through this. This is why I am the way I am. You know, the more that we are able to detach and think of ourselves like a radio, the more it's easier to stay in your own bubble, the more it's easier to, um, be more mindful of your own emotions without attaching to everything else. Um, and then we've got greater awareness of all the, the, the wrong that's happening. And then we internalize that too. And so we're just a walking smorgasbord of human emotions. And so of course that's going to feel like a radio or not a radio, a roller coaster. Of course, that's going to feel like a roller coaster. But I'm here to tell you that by thinking of myself with this analogy as this analogy of a radio, it's actually made life as a human, as a highly sensitive person, as an empath, as a psychic medium, a lot easier. 
because sometimes, you know, say I'll just like wake up and I feel like there's a dark cloud hanging over me. And without an awareness of, of what I'm about to speak to you about, then you're just kind of like, yeah, you know, you grumble through the day. You might think, what the hell's wrong with me? Why am I so upset? Why, why do I feel this way? Because um, maybe there's no reason that you, logical reason that you can think of in your mind that would make sense for why you feel the way you do. Maybe you're like, what is wrong with me? I'm fine. I'm blessed. Why do I feel this way? And this is obviously I'm not getting into people's life dynamics, you know, um, or any kind of mental health, physical health kind of stuff right now. So obviously those things can play a part, certainly in how we're feeling and our moods. This is more, you know, outside of those things. It's helped me so much to think of myself as a radio. I ask myself, I really check in with myself when I'm feeling a certain kind of way. Am I, is this truly my emotion? Does it make sense for me what I'm going through? Um, does it make sense for me or no? Sometimes it's a yes. Sometimes it's a no. If it's a no, I trust that it's collective energy that I'm feeling. Okay. But regardless, if it's yours or the collective, it helps to not attach to it. Let me tell you what I mean. We are in the habit and I'm still in the habit. It's a habit I need to break. I'm trying to consciously do it. But it's 44, almost 45 years of thinking and saying the following. For example, I am tired. I am sick. I am sad. Spirit has been reminding me, no, you are not tired. You are not sick. You are not sad. You are feeling tired. You are feeling sick. You are feeling sad. We need to stop identifying as our emotions. Can you feel the difference between I am tired versus I am feeling tired? There's an energetic difference, right? A big energetic difference. And so even just, you know, like for instance, I might be feeling some homesickness for where we just left. And I, and I do occasionally get little bouts of waves of homesickness or doubt, like, did I make the right decision? Do I, did I do the right thing? Because we, I've got it in my mind, and I think most of us operate this way. Uh, you know, if it was the right decision, then I would never miss the old place, which is hogwash. Of course, you would still miss the old location you spent 11 years of in we made memories and raised children that does not mean that you made the wrong choice in leaving it right but it's like this weird thing that our brain does so for me it's been helpful to allow myself to feel that without identifying without saying uh, like interpreting and being like oh I'm feeling homesick, therefore I made a wrong decision. That keeps you in this loop. That takes you out of being a radio. Because remember, a radio doesn't decide what's, it, it, it doesn't decide what song is playing. It just plays the song, right? So if you're picking up on the collective energy, and there's a lot of collective, say, anger, and so you're going through a period where you just feel cranky and angry all the time. First of all, let's check your hormones because... <laughs> perimenopausal club over here. But secondly, it's likely collective. And so if you just allow yourself to have that off day and feel a little bit angry and ragey and cranky within reason, we're not going to hurt anybody, right? But if you allow yourself to have that kind of day without sitting there going, there's something wrong with me. I shouldn't be feeling this way. What the heck? You know, that's where we get in the problem. That's how we identify. So that's like number one, a theme that I've been seeing that's been showing up. 
And I think it's really helpful to talk about it more. A huge theme, and I talked about it in the last episode too, is two things can exist at the same time. You can be homesick and you can be overjoyed. You can be both of those things. Um, so yeah, there's one thing. Another thing that comes in really, really strongly is like just, this is what I wrote down. Just because you can feel it all doesn't mean you have to fix it all or save everyone. A little louder. Let's repeat it. Just because you can feel it all doesn't mean you have to fix it all or save everyone. I know because I live this, but also I have been intimately dabbling in other people's energy for six or seven years intentionally, unintentionally my whole life, <laughs> intentionally since I began this work, that when you are highly sensitive, when you are an empath, when you lean on the highly intuitive, psychic, all of those things kind of go together, newsflash, just letting you know, you're probably a little bit psychic if you're a highly sensitive person. It lies within you. So when you are that way, you feel it all. You have a deeper awareness of what's happening with other people, right? Within the world. And you feel that more closely because you are blending with it right? It's, it's probably why people like us cry, you know, in different, on TV shows, watching TV shows in different moments, because you are blending with that character in that book or on that movie or on the news program so deeply. It's as if it's like you're experiencing it too, because you are energetically experiencing that emotion as well. So I don't know about you, but that allows me to accept the fact that I do that a little bit more because I see its purpose. I know why that happens. Um, it's also on the flip side why a lot of people like us do not like, you know, graphic horror, gore. I mean, if it's like cheesy horror, sure. But, um, you know, get very upset by certain kind of things because it's like... Mm. I can literally anticipate and feel that what's what I'm watching. So I don't want to watch something terribly gory um, or horrific on TV. So there's that as well, right? I feel like all of this is just remembering who you are and allowing yourself to be who you are. And that's certainly something that we are all learning in this lifetime acceptance, but you know, so we feel it all right. And so because we can feel it all and we're internalizing it a little bit, like it's ours, because remember we're blending our energy with everyone and everything else all of the time, we feel we must do something about it. And I'm getting better at this. My husband, I'm realizing the longer I'm with him, I've been with him 20 years now is also an empath. Um, and he feels if he knows about something or feels something, he has to fix it. I have to fix it. If I know about it, then I have to fix it, right? The, the long couple kind of argument of, I don't need you to fix anything. I just want to talk to you. I just need to tell you how I feel. And then he's like, well, if you're telling me that I have to fix it. No, you don't. You just have to listen, you know? But as empaths, we do that all the time. We feel like we have to fix something. So what we're being called to learn right now is don't turn off your feelings. Please don't because you're here like that human antenna. You're here to feel, to be that radio, to feel it all, simply to transmute the energy, right? So it can go in and come out the other way, transmuted with light, more positive. Think about some like, I don't know, let's think about some radio frequency, some energy that's like really mucky, right? Really low vibe. It goes in through your light body. You're a beaming source of light. You don't attach to it. You don't hold on and say, welcome home. 
you just go, oh, okay, got a visitor today. It's called rage. And then you just allow it to leave in a better, more neutral, more positive state. That's your contribution to the world, little light worker. <laughs> one of them, but one that we really, 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 really need to learn. Myself included, trying to learn it each and every single day. So we can have an awareness of what needs fixing, right? We can have a, an awareness that everything isn't perfect without having to bear the responsibility of having to fix everything. There needs to be more boundaries within our lives, right? Of what we allow to come in. We're allowing we're attaching to everything that comes in, essentially is what I'm hearing spirits say in this moment. We're attaching to everything that comes in as if it is ours. And if it's ours, then it's our responsibility to somehow figure out what it means and how to get rid of it. And I feel like what's happening, it's just like I'm seeing, um, you know, like the inside of a computer, forgive me, Scott, my husband, who might be listening to this as he edits it, um, because um, I don't remember what that's called. Uh, <laughs> he would be like, oh my God, because he's an IT guy. Uh, it, it feels like it's just short cir circuiting. There's too much friggin' information, too much data, right? Empty the trash, right? I, I should be doing that. I'm looking at my trash can on my computer. Empty the trash on your computer, in your internal computer. Clear it out. Be the radio. So that's like overall like a major theme I wanted to share with you. And I hope it helps you even to like air it out. Give you some spiritual homework for this next week. Um, for the rest of your life, really, that I don't want to overwhelm you, about trying to think of yourself like that radio. We don't have to fix everything because we know things need to be fixed. We need to do what we can do one step at a time, right? Remember last year, I think it was, uh, it's just popping in my mind, so I'm going to share it again. Last year, I talked about kind of being overwhelmed. It might have been a reel that I put out. It may not have been a, I might have not talked about it on a podcast, but I um, was having one of those days where I was feeling the weight of the world and I had like driven past a, uh, in like an encampment area where people were living, uh, people that um, are without homes. And I felt this like sense of dread, like I just felt so heavy and I felt like I just wanted to ball. And I was thinking like, how can this exist in this world? Like how and what, how, like it's, it's, it's such a huge problem. It's like, how can I help with that? Right? Because sometimes what happens is we get so overwhelmed that we're like, I'm just one person. I, I can't, I can't do that. Right? I can't help that. And so we just carry the weight of number one, feeling like we're not doing anything. Maybe we're not doing anything. Maybe we're avoiding, um, because we're overwhelmed and we don't know where to begin. And what spirit, what I heard spirit say to me in those moments, as I was driving by thinking like, I'm just one person, what am I supposed to do? but also feeling like I need to do something. I heard spirits said, it just takes one thing, one person. Like if you, the next person that you see that is without a home, you know, if you make eye contact with them, if you smile, if you treat them like a fellow human being versus just walking by with your eyes downcast, right? as many of us do, because we are, we're, we're, we're so empathetic. I'm like, if, if I, if I, uh, then I, then I have to fix. And then I, you know, it's, it's, if you're like that, sometimes I get it because sometimes I have found myself being like, if I stop and I talk to this person too long, I'm going to want to save them and fix their whole life. Right. So it's like, I'm not going to make eye contact. But what I was hearing from spirit was like, no, you, if you don't have anything else to give, but the smile on your face and eye contact, that is enough. Every good deed you do, whether it's a dollar, whether it's buying somebody's lunch, whether it's 
giving somebody eye contact and talking to them is enough. And what spirit was showing me was like this ripple effect, this domino effect that you may give a smile to that person and it may light them up. Oh my God. She actually looked at me like I was a person, you know, you know, like I'm here, like I'm not invisible. And then that light that you just shared through the eye contact, through the smile, then lives within them. And then maybe they share that light with somebody else in some way, right? Maybe they return, give that smile to someone else. I don't know, but it's a ripple effect. It really and truly is. And I know you know this to be true because I'm sure at some point you have been down and out, downtrodden, as I used, I think, in the last episode um, that I recorded today, and just kind of going through a tough time. And somebody out there has smiled at you, has given you a compliment, has held the door open for you, Maybe they have paid for your coffee in the drive through ahead of you and it has changed your whole day. I feel like I'm going to cry as I'm saying this. I, I just, I'm moved by it because I, I, it's, it, I, I can feel the impact of, and I know the impact of what a small act of kindness can do. So that's just wanting to come out within me, be shared with you. I hope that it inspires you today to, you know, share a smile, make eye contact, whatever it is that you are able to do today, but know that that's enough that we don't, just because we feel it all doesn't mean we have to fix everything. We don't have to fix everything. We, we need to stop getting overwhelmed with the enormity of what needs to be fixed and just one step at a time, one little thing at a time. Okay. I love you guys. I hope you have a great week and I will see you again next week. Bye risers. If you have enjoyed this episode, please consider hopping on over to wherever you listen to your podcast and giving it a five star review. Thank you so much in advance. If you'd like to keep in touch, please head over to my website, theintuitiverising.com to keep up with all the things that I have been doing. I also have a private Facebook community for people just like you. It's called the Intuitive Rising Community. All you got to do is request to join and I will let you in. Keep rising.